Murphy. Oh, yes. Oh. Hi, folks. Dave with DBS Tech Talk. And today, we're going to talk about the Focal Elex. Now, this has been long awaited. A lot of people have asked me about it. A lot of people have asked, when are you doing your review? When is your review coming? When, are, when, are you, when, 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 when? And I've done a couple of um, different conversations in regards to it, you know, giving some just generic uh, impressions. But I hadn't done my full review. And the reason being is these are amazing. Uh, and it has blown my mind as to what they can do. And I had a hard time coming up with how to describe it. So, here's my attempt <laughs> to review the best headphones that I've ever heard. And uh, let me see if I have the... They come in a big, huge, uh, amazing box. Now, my box is a little beat up uh, because... My, mine were bought off of eBay and they were a damaged product so they never got per never got sold by Mastrop and so the liquidator sold them so the box is hopefully your box if you get them from Mastrop or wherever else is in better shape than this one but this one was pretty beat up but as you can see it's got a lot of padding on the inside so there was nothing wrong with the headphones and you get a user manual that tells you like a hundred hours worth of burn-in time you get a cable um, little bag for protection which I don't use and then also inside the flap were your cables and that was it that's the only thing that came with it uh, this is not really a portable box nothing that you can just tilt around with you you'd look like a like a, a, an idiot if you took it to the office in that form people would be like what and what does he bring to the office and then the cables uh, single-ended cable and the XLR cable are both the same style it is a flat style it's a little thick and it's fairly long about six foot long which is nice goes in the uh, 2.5 monos and uh, a quarter inch. I believe that's 2.5s. It's a little stiff. It's not the most flexible, but once you straighten it out, it's not bad. And uh, I don't have any complaints with the cable. Just wish it wasn't quite as stiff. The XLR cable is the same way. It's trolling me right now. There we go. Got nice strain relief on the XLR. It is a new trick, and then um, nice and thick, same length. So they're not bad. They are just they're a little stiff, but not not horrid. I've had a lot worse um, cables come from for headphones, especially uh, a more expensive headphone. The headphone itself. They're a little, a little heavy. They're not the lightest headphone in the world, but they feel premier. Um, you know that you've got a premium headset when you put these on, and when you when you pick them up and hold them, they have just a build quality that says, "I want to be top dog in your in your setup." Metal, metal really hard plastic and then it's got metal around here very nice branding very subtle all black has a little spring mechanism I don't know how they did that but it just goes right back into place very nice um, headband with leather on top and then padding underneath that just cushions your head like you have a pillow on the pads are incredible super thick um, very plush when I, uh, one word down pillow when you're wearing them I mean they're, they're it's just so comfortable and then you get that 
little clicking sound when you open it. That's just so satisfying. And I go to number four when I put them on. The only complaint that's a little bit of a hard thing, if you take your cables out often or um, you can't figure out which one's left and right, the writing on it is dark. So it's black on black and on the cables it's black on black and so it's just a little hard to determine which cable is for which ear but once you figure it out and you get it on you're fine and then obviously if you have them sitting down you can notice that the bigger part because it's off center is your left ear or right ear you know and so you can just pick them up that way but it's just putting the cables on it can be a little tricky to figure out which one is which um, just a minor gripe it would have been nice if they had put maybe like a red and a blue on the earphones and on the cable so that you could just differentiate and just put them in real easy but other than that no problems with the build quality or anything like that and uh, when you put them on your head as I said they're just like pillows you would think that these things would be super heavy on the head give you a lot of um, weight down in your neck but they don't they just sit comfortable they have like this natural curve to them even though they don't have the d-shaped oval hole it's slightly egg shaped it's not a circle um, so they do fit on your ears nicely I don't have anything um, pressing my ears or touching my ears which makes it really nice because I do not like that feeling and you can definitely see if you get the right light you can see straight through so these things are open and when you put them on you realize no isolation these things are open as open can be so far 10 stars I mean you could go 100 stars if you wanted um, definitely two thumbs up beautiful beautiful build beautiful comfort I do not have a problem with it some people may have an issue with clamp but I do not so 10 stars on for me two thumbs up so far now you get to the interesting port and you want to call them neutral when it comes to sound but they're not for mixing um, these are not studio headphones they're for listening but they're for but they are just slightly above neutral and that adds the fun factor to them I have one word to describe them and it's immersive when you think of immersive it means being in the center and just feeling everything around you and just being awe in awe of what you're what you're what you're in regards to what's going on when you put these on you're fully involved sorry school bus <laughs> anyways uh, um, these are the most immersive detailed headphones and most fun that I've ever heard. Bass has a really nice detailed thump to them. It has a girth to them, but it's not to the point where it bleeds into the mids. It's not to the point where it overpowers the rest of the the signature. The bass is where it's supposed to be. That's very balanced, but yet at the same time very meaty, and you can really feel the impact on them. I love the bass on these. these. These are by far the best sounding bass that I've ever heard when it comes to a headphone. I've heard some bass that goes deeper and gives more emphasis and more kick and more impact, but it at the same time bleeds into the mids or overpowers the rest of the sound signature. These do not do that. They have very nice balance to the whole sound when it comes to the bass. The mids 
are just a little bit elevated um, and they sound very smooth, have a really nice timbre to them, very natural sounding and they're just engaging. Uh, it sounds like the singer, if the singer is, is center in the song, it sounds like the singer is looking directly at you and standing in front of you and singing, giving you a solo. If the singer, if they, if they have a, like a four part quartet going on or a choir and only one of the people singing and they're standing off center, you can tell whether or not they are uh, stage left or stage right. They are um, very well spaced out in the midst, but they in the midst, but they stay balanced and even, so you don't get a like man, that one person sounds really far back here, and the other person sounds really close. It's very well balanced out, and um, they sound natural, um, very natural, which is really nice. And it also does not bleed into the treble or into the bass. They just all have a very cohesive sound. The treble um, has really nice climb to it. You can get very high up and you can also get a very nice balance down in the lower registers of the treble. And I don't get any ringing, I don't get any sibilance, I don't hear any of that fatiguing sound. Um, I, I listen to a lady called Sandy Patty. I don't know if you've ever heard Sandy Patty, but she's a really high soprano. She can really, really, um, she can make the ears tingle. <laughs> and on her, on her one song, is it's Sound of Music medley. She sings there is not a sense of any screeching or sibilance in that song no matter which amp I'm using and we'll cover which amps sound better here in a moment but the the way that these portray treble is very very nice and smooth and silky it's not it's not peaky or up and down or have certain areas that are better than others I find that there it's just smooth all the way through and uh, that then adds into the clarity in the, in the imaging and details these things are detail monsters you will hear just details from all over the place and they're not just in the highs they're in the mids and in the bass you can hear sounds I actually was hearing sounds in certain songs that I'd never heard before and I don't normally say that and um, I was really impressed I was listening to Vangelis I was listening to some of some of various songs I can't remember all the songs I was listening to but with all his ambient songs and all his various sounds of, of space and um, little itty bitty just nuances in, in his um, in his drums and, and syncopation that he uses I was hearing unique sounds why why must everybody drive past the window when I'm doing a review <laughs> sorry about the dogs they are my guard dogs but anyways um these show details that I've never heard before and you can definitely tell that they are a step up above everything else that I have Soundstage, it's not the widest soundstage in the world. It's not like narrowed like right here, but it's not M1060 wide. It's, but it's wide enough that you get that feeling. What these do though, is it gives you a 360 degree sound and it layers and details very well with inside it. I and that's where the immersion comes from. It makes you feel like, especially on songs from Vangelis, Yanni, um, you'll see Haurakara, or however you pronounce his name, um, makes you feel like you're right there in it. And it's just, you, you just sit back and you go, man, if you close your eyes, you can feel yourself wherever that artist is trying to place you.
they don't have that sound stage that's just way out there where it sounds like you're in the amphitheater and you're in the back row and you're getting all of the the sounds around you it's not that wide it's more like you're in, in the middle and everybody is around you and you're getting a solo concert I, I love the way that these portray sound it's warm it's inviting and it's just so incredibly immersive amp wise um, the topping stack the D30 uh, DAC and A30 amp they will make these sound a little more analytical it'll brighten them up a little bit and at times you can get a song that may have a little bit of a sharpness to it it's not simple but it'll be too almost to the point that's too much for me and so you may have to tweak the volume just a little bit on certain songs on it it, it can be a little piercing and sharp on some trouble the bass is really nice on it though and the mids are ex extremely smooth um, so the, it, it's a, it's sounds good on the topping stack but at times it can be just a little fatiguing depending on what kind of music you listen to on the APPJ PA1502 you get with, with the different tubes that I have I don't have stock tubes in it I have the electroharmonics tubes in it um, so those open up the sound stage a little bit more it makes it just a little bit sound a little bit wider and it's a lot it, it, it clears it up uh, it's not your typical tube sound where you get a little warmth to it it actually sounds a little a little cleaner um, you get a really nice kick in the bass but it does tone the treble out just a little bit so it kind of makes them a little bit more laid back with a more open uh, sound stage the Cavelli tube hybrid or CTH um, does a unique thing in which it warms them up and it mellows the treble out just a little bit just takes a little bit off the top and um, brings the, the mids forward a little bit and makes them even more engaging and I actually like the sound of the CTH on them it, it's, to me it's a really good blend um, nice big boomy bass and, and just uh, a warmness to it and yet you still get all the details out of it it still has really nice detail but it just takes that small little edge off of the treble and just makes them I, I, I that's my new mix with the Elex is the CTH I love it the I the Aeon X7S sounds great it's like the topping on single ended it's just not as powerful um, and then when you put it on balanced It, 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 the extra power that you get with balanced um, just makes these just shine if everything opens up sparkles more crispness adds a little bit into the sound stage gives you a little more depth in the, into the, the layers the bass becomes really thick and impactful and uh, I I love it on balance so I'm kind of split if I don't if I don't want to listen on balanced I'm using the CTH on single ended and I'm just in awe and amazement and then if I put it on balance I'm like I don't want to set it down because I love it on balance so either either of them it's great overall I do find that the CTH is somewhat balance or not balance somewhat amp uh, sensitive a little bit too analytical and you're going to get a brighter headphone a little too mellow and you're going to get a little bit duller of a headphone and um, so I I prefer a headphone that's a little bit on the more neutral side of it and uh, has it just above neutral because these headphones I find play best with the Aeon and the Cavelli CTH and I wouldn't call either one of those pure neutral headphone, uh, amps they're a little bit on the warmer side and so that's where I, I tend to prefer the Elex they will drive off your phone they will drive off your DAP um, and they sound good
but I find that with a little bit more of an amp, they sound better. Uh, so an amp is, re is recommended, it's not required. Should you get these? Absolutely. Are they worth the $700? Absolutely. Um, I would say these are probably worthy of more than that. But considering that I haven't heard headphones that cost more than these, I couldn't compare them. But if I were to pay for them, having heard them, and if I was desiring a pair, I would pay more than the asking price. Um, would I look for a deal and try to get them cheaper? Yeah, and that's what I did. But since they're so rare and hard to find on the on, on eBay and anywhere else, and they're pretty much only available on Mass Drop, if you do find a pair elsewhere, I wouldn't have a problem paying over it. I really would over the 700. Love these things best headphones I've ever heard and um, wow I'm glad I purchased them I really am I love my Ulex how about you and are you interested in buying a pair this has been Dave with DBS Tech Talk thank you for watching and have yourself a great day